tribunal has issued the paperwork, but the tribunal is not effectively in front. You are dealing with a single uh, actor and you are staying there as a tribunal. So you understand about a tribunal in law, yes? Right, from how you explained it, correct. Okay. The second thing is that you are also giving notice in a prayer that the mind, body and spirit are connected. They are no longer divided. So you are stating that the mind, body and spirit are present as one in front of them. So that means that any assumption underpinning their system that says that the judge is, uh, is the representative of the scribe and a notary, um, representing uh, the authority over, say, the, um, uh, the flesh, that the prosecutor is representing the guardian as the authority over the soul and that the um, clerk is sitting there as the authority over the person is null and void. Totally null so, and void because you, you, you are there, right? So I've got to go so, through this because you asked, you asked a key question. But keep going, yeah, far away. So then meaning after you say this prayer of atonement and showing that you are not a slave anymore and understand this, understand the system they would have no power to throw me throw you into jail or take any of your assets or attack you in that court anymore as long as you maintain your honor correct you, you correct you have seized their power now will they understand that <clears throat> At now no later yes uh, do they understand that no because you're dealing with a level of 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 not just ignorance but also uh, meanness but the first line and by using the word we not I we all the way through any assumed power that they are sourcing is null and void you've also enjoined their matter to your prayer because you've made a confession God is your witness in your confession you have pointed out that no one in that court is an originating uh, accuser they're all actors which is why you say you do not recognize them which means they have no authority and then you have finished it by grace and forgiveness and then you've sealed it by amen so that is a perfected prayer of atonement you have completed the sacrament of penance the matter is over now will they Brilliant. will they stop no they won't they'll keep charging through and we've already had an example of this they will keep charging through and then you switch to being in competence uh, as the general executor because you've already filed your paperwork as a decree of nullity, as the revocation, and as the um, ecclesiastical deed. So you hold your position as general executor and you don't motion anything. You order. You are there as a visitor, as a general executor or someone else you appoint and you order that the matter be dismissed and you do not consent at all because these people are actors they're usurpers i mean would you would you allow someone in the street to tell you what to do a complete stranger if that has no uniform and says uh give me all your details your bank account would you do that a perfect stranger not in a uniform of course not right then why would you do it to these three strangers and actors that have no authority? Now, in doing so, in having that ecclesiastical deed put through and hopefully getting all the paperwork back for it and being accepted, can you still hold commerce? Can you still hold business? Can you still be able to... Of course you can, because, because you, your life-born record says that you have a true trust, doesn't it? And it means that you can create trust from that. Uh, you have a trust, and in their system, you need a trust to act in commerce. You, you're not, you're not. When you do this, you're not saying that. That look. Let me add another thing here. When, when they created the um, birth certificate and created the Sister KV Trust, they have written instruments against your life, against the energy of your life for billions of dollars, billions. And they have given you back pennies. Either, okay. either they give up 
control and dissolve them, which is what they must do, or they can pay for all your bills. But there is no uh, removal. of I mean, for the pitiful things that they pay us, the pitiful things they pay us, we have in no way said, requested or implied that we wish to stop having those. In fact, what we've said is, we don't think and we know that you are really poor administrators and it's time given up. We have, we have now grown up. We are now a majority. We are now claiming what is ours and we're going to do a better job. Okay? Thank you very much for your time, Frank. I appreciate it. No, good luck. All the best. All right. Thank you for those questions. Uh, thank you, Frank. Uh, we'll get to Ron next here on the phone. Ron? Hi, Terry. Hi, Frank. Hi. Hi, Ron. How's the weather in Australia? Uh, cooling off, but okay. Oh, good. Hey, um, this this court thing is, is kind of driving me crazy. And it's driving me crazy because, on the one hand, I see how much effort everybody puts in to defend either to defend themselves or show up in court and the judges and the and the and the system basically run over you um that was evident when, with Gail's thing and it was evident with those folks down in Denver um yep. i have a different take on this if you would allow me about a minute i can explain it i think i think the entire court system is a military-run organization. And I say that because of the way they're acting. The lower court judges are protected by the appellate court judges. The appellate court judges are protected by the Supreme Court justices of the state and of the feds. You cannot break their power um, within their system. It's just virtually impossible. I'm thinking they're operating under martial law rule, which they are in America. They absolutely are right. You are, right. but this is this is executive order back to um, uh, Lincoln. This right. is how they they overcome it. But so but, I I, I do it. have a a thought about how to sidestep what is happening to us. Mm-hmm. I believe that we should strive to get the law forum shifted over to the covenant of one heaven where we now have equal we're now equal in in the law okay they're equal i'm equal now judge me against these laws not against your roman slave law but against the real law sure we're getting you know? to that point we're getting okay. to that point on the 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 I, you're absolutely right, and and by the way, it was apparent in the court case in Denver that it was not operating as a military court based on the the sign of the flags. Now, of course, they don't they don't even herald what form of law they're operating <laughs> under. So I'm not I'm not sort of you know you know picking picking wings off flies, but uh, right. it 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 could well have been um, a a non you know acting as a non military court. So just bear in mind that it, it may not be a, a unilateral issue, but it is, of course, a feature that we haven't discussed at length for a while, that in America, America is still under martial law. It's still under uh, emergency powers granted under the Civil War, and they have not been pursued. In fact, they're renewed every uh, year. Every year, yes. Every year they're renewed. And uh, God help the president that wouldn't renew those. So I just, I think, what I'd say to you is, I think this is good. Remembering that if you have reached a point of knowing who and what you are, if you've reached a point in getting a real handle on how they play their games, if you've got a a handle on, on the essentials of law, then this is a natural progression. But many people are still coming to this fresh, new, they're coming from different ideas, they're coming with, uh, you know, people telling them different stuff. So um, 
ultimately what we, we wish to have, and I hope this is going to be the fulfilment, is that the communities and those that are existing communities that accept Eucadia law form as a superior law form will be able to hear uh, and conduct the matters of law and certainly that will then give us uh, a good grounding to then go to the courts and say, well, judge, if you won't hear it in Eucadia, I'm here to tell you that we're here to change the venue and it will be heard over here. Right. Yeah? So we're a little bit way off from that. We're getting there, but we're a little bit way off. All right? But in the meantime, do you think we could get it, uh, the forum, the law forum changed if we well, they, insisted upon it? Well, I'll tell you what, we've, we've had cases being heard in America on Sharia law, uh-huh. and we have cases heard all the time under um, uh, under Talmudic law. So absolutely, there is the evidence of that happening. Yes. Right. Well, I'm trying. <laughs> You're I'm, doing very well. Right? I, I sent You're you two, well. two notices that I'm I'm working toward that angle, okay, that I've uh, put in already. Anyway, I'll let someone else take over. Well, good on you, Ron, and... and uh, I know it's frustrating, but think about where we are now. I say that it's not even that the veil has lifted, is that there's no more veil, is there? No. And that's a big change in the space of 12 months, isn't it? Yes, it is. I I think they're just, they're beside themselves. They don't know what to do anymore. So they're like a, a an animal that's been hit and kicking, you know? Yep. All right. Well, we we need we need uh, friends of the law. Yeah. <laughs> Amicus Lex. So let's keep going. <laughs> Good on you, Ron. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Ron. All right. We have uh, Octavia next on the phone line. Are you there? You have a question? Yes. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi. Hi. Um, my question would be on religion. Um, based upon the information that you have provided, would it be safe to say that the religions or cults that practice the the baptizing and the baptism, would it be safe to say that it really shouldn't be a part of them based upon what you, you know, let us know tonight, or the breakdown of what baptism and, and being baptized mean? Well, what I'm saying is that, that when you when you read words uh, attributed to an, in, an incredible uh, force 2,000 years ago that revealed knowledge to us, and, and we call that being Jesus, uh, Yeshua, or um, uh, Christ, or whether you um, follow Islam and actually read the Quran and the surahs, or whether you follow any religion, there is one common, and that is that uh, free will, reason, consent are all essential ingredients to the profession of faith. Now, that's what the scripture tells us. And then we have the ritual of baptism, baptismo, that is inflicted on a baby, on an infant, that has no chance for reason, free will. Now, we might say we do it for their behalf and we're given all these reasons why it's a good thing. Now, I'm saying to you that uh, the people that have told us it's a good thing are the same people that did the Crusades. <laughs> they're the same people that run the banks. They're the same people that created the laws. They're the same people that treat us as slaves. And if we make a choice to uh, reject what they're saying, it does not mean that we are rejecting the scripture and it does not mean that we are rejecting uh, our relationship with the divine creator. We're merely growing into a more competent being in separating what churches of men tell us and what scripture and inspiration of the divine tells us. And the two aren't always compatible. Yeah? Makes perfect sense. Thanks a lot. Good on you. 